Hey everyone, this is Max from Unsubscribed Healthcare. I want to go over with you right now the clearinghouse. In the left side column, you'll see Add to CSV File, Save CSV File, Clear Rows 6 through 70, Clear CSV. This refers back to your patients and when you want to create a file for submitting billing to insurance. Currently, I have a CSV file formatted to uh, upload or has the ability to be uploaded to Office Ally. I have not done this yet because I do not use Office Ally. I'm currently looking for testers for it um, to try it out for me and give me feedback. When that goes through, I can either guarantee that it will work or not. But after talking with the tech people over at Office Ally, they said that as long as the CSV is formatted properly, it should work and they sent me over a CSV file that has anything red needs to be filled in. And so you, what I did is I made it easier to look at. Instead of looking at a 233 columns, you now can look at it in just three columns and fill it in properly. Right. So anything in red needs to be filled in. When we come here, if you see Blue Cross Blue Shield, if you know that it's a group health plan, you'll click group health plan. Otherwise, if it's like Medicare or anything else, you'll click on that. But you can see that it added an X here and got rid of all the other reds. Then what we want to do is check out the next column. Next column looks good. There's no red here. What it did is it pulled all of the information from Maxwell R. Shippen from the patient intake. So when you perform a patient intake and you add all the billing and everything else, it carries forward to all of your sheets and it's easily populated. This up here in this corner, it's just all of your information and just populates into the CMS file or the CSV file properly. So we go into the third column here and it says, do you accept the assignment, right? So if you're going through Office Ally, most likely you're going to click yes. If you were providing just a super bill for your patients, you would click no, and you could then check on the diagnosis codes. So this again is still searchable. So if you're looking for cervicalgia, you type in cervic and then it comes up. If you want to do low back pain, right? Unspecified low back pain is right there. Uh, and let's say they had a shoulder, right? So we go here adhesive capsulitis perfect um now we see no reds there okay so come down a little bit further please fill in the dates of service from cells uh, in cell b29 this is getting into the cpt code area the cpt code area is where you fill in all of your cpt code information so say that we did an initial evaluation today the 19th i'm a physical therapist so we would use um, modifier gp I'm going to come over here and do diagnosis pointer. We did it for A, B, and C. $200 is what I charge per unit. And you don't have to worry about ID qualifier. It is not in red. I'm going to click on my name, and now you can see it populates a, an example of an NPI number. If we want to continue on, say we did more than one CPT code, which most people do. If we did like therapeutic exercise, but we don't want to have to keep typing in the name. I made this box over here so that you could select how many CP2 codes you want. So if we have only two, then we would do the two. If we have two and three and then go all the way up to six, you could do that. Let's just do for for right now. I'm going to click on carry forward all of the modifiers or the modifiers I want. I'm not going to do pricing. You can do pricing, but my price is different for therapeutic exercise. So I'm not going to do that, and I will carry over the provider as well. Now you can see that it only fills in through CPT code 1, 2, 3, and 4. 5 and 6 are blank. This makes it so that it formats properly. If we decided that we didn't need the fourth code, and we clicked on that, you can see that it takes it out now. And it only has 1, 2, and 3 filled in. So again, coming back here, CPT code for uh, therapeutic exercise, for charges, 75. We'll say that we did two units. Come down here, CPT code three. We'll say that we did manual. We can add a 59 modifier. Charges, uh, we can say 50. And we did one unit. Okay, so we come up here. You can see that the total has now been uh, added together. That was red before because there were no, tar uh, no totals. If you had a person actually pay like $100 or whatever, uh, it automatically updates for the balance due for you. Um, so now we need place of service. So B27, if we come here, this is the last red cell. B27, I am a physical therapist, so we'll put 12, but you can put 11. I can show you what that does uh, change. 
Now that we have all of this, we can click Save Patient Settings. Right? Now we can do Add to CSV File. So if we come down to the very bottom, you can see how there are these Blue Cross Blue Shield listed out. This is actually the information that the file will populate and send over to the Office Ally. If we click Add to CSV File again, you'll see that a new row has been added to the bottom. So you can see if you have patient profiles set up, you're able to do this pretty quickly. Um, if you click Save CSV File, you're also going to be have the script run. It saves what's below into a CSV file. It takes the name of the clearinghouse, puts it at the front, and it adds the date and time that you did this. If we click it, you can review it, and it should look like the rows um, at the very bottom, which had all of that information populated to it. Okay, we'll exit out of that. Click on the X. We can clear these rows now. And what you'll see is that all of the formulas and everything else have been uh, returned down here at the bottom in 74 through 78. If we click on clear CSV, so say that we sent in the CSV file once a week or once a day, you could add to CSV, save CSV, and then clear at the very end of the night, and you can see that it goes away. If you made a mistake, you could go backwards and change it. Right, that's how you undo it. Same thing if we're trying to bring the, the patient's information back. And I was like, oh, I didn't actually want to clear those things. You can press back and it will go back. All right, so if we wanted to save this as a CMS with a grid, you click on this and what it does is it copies a Google slide that I've created and formatted. The program right now is putting in all of this information into each of the cells that I created on the Google slide. So it can take a little bit. Here it tells you which folder it's saved into. So it's saved into the patient folder. And then you click to review it. Top left, you can see that it named it after the patient, CMS 1500, with the time and date again. This is what it would look like. So you can see where it says, do you accept assignment, assignment down at the bottom in number 27? It says no. So this is perfect for giving to people for getting reimbursement by their insurances. You can see all of the dates right there. What we're going to do is that we're going to go back now. And we'll change, do you accept assignment? Yes. And let's change the date to the 24th. 24th. Right, you can see that these dates updated as well. We no longer did the evaluation, so we're going to change that. Okay. All of these have updated. And we're going to click on Save CMS without a grid to show you what it looks like without a grid. Okay, again, it shows you the, uh, shows you the folder that it saves to. You. And again, how it's named, patient name, CMS 1500, and the time and date. Now you can see here, if we go down, the date has been changed to the 24th from the 19th. This X is over the no for assignment. And you can see that everything else is there. Um, but this it would be to be able to print it out onto a uh, pre-printed CMS 1500 form. The last thing is I've incorporated it to add as billing entry. So if you click add as billing entry and then you come over to the billing tab, now the information will be brought here. So we click clear. You click on the patient's name, their patient ID, and the dates of service. We just added the 24th and you can see all of that information is copied. It tells you which units or which things were charged and how many units were charged per that. It tells you how much was billed. Um, and it makes it so it's super easy and fast to bring it from the clearinghouse over to billing so that you can keep track of it. When you get the amount received, you can update all that. But this video is about the clearinghouse. So I've just made it easy to do that. So again, 
we click clear rows this is the last feature everything updates we come here back to Max shipping because this is the one we just saved the patient settings on a little while ago and we do search patient settings and you'll see all of this red disappear okay there you go now you're able to update all the day, time and dates and go from there all right i hope this was helpful if you have any questions please comment below. Thank you so much for your purchase.